As we just heard, former Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett is not very happy with Dan Andrews. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, the Premier says any announcements he planned to make wouldn't have come into effect until later in the week anyway. After three and a half months of lockdown, does one or two more days really matter? Yes, it does, because the Premier only two days ago gave an indication that a lot of our small businesses would be able to reopen from the middle of next week. And so, therefore, that doesn't happen instantaneously. Uh, people have started to clean the places, hire staff, order in food, etc. But the worst thing is, we've had seven new cases today. Seven. We have a population of 6.4 million people. And for seven cases, 6.4 million people are continued to be held hostage by this Premier. New South Wales some days now have recorded more cases than us, and not only are they able to continue to trade, but they have no rings of steel. We have five kilometre radiuses and now 25. This is a... This is a communist state. Jeff, I think everyone agrees that New South Wales has handled it better, but that is largely due to the fact that New South Wales has had superior contact tracing. So seven cases in Victoria could more easily become a whole lot more. Yes, but how long have we had this virus? How long have we had contract uh, tracing problems here in Victoria? Why haven't they been addressed if they are the problem? Now, I'm not arguing that it may be the problem, but if it is the problem, why has it taken months to get it right? We have a government. And if they can't govern, if the Premier can't lead, get out of the way and let someone else come in and do the job for him. All right, Jeff, let's say you're still Premier and we open up now and our cases start to rocket back up. What would you do? Well, firstly, we wouldn't be in this situation if I was still Premier because I'd never have allowed the mismanagement of the hotel quarantines that started this second wave. Where there's an outbreak, as they did in Tasmania, where they've done in New South Wales, where they've done in Queensland, you address the problem. But you do not lock down the state for the best part of a year. Jeff, you're not holding back today. Federal Health Minister Greg Hunts had a big go as well. What would you say to those who think that this is just a partisan pylon to the man who's had really the hardest job in the country for the last four months? People have died. People are losing their income and their businesses. And unfortunately, many in the community say, well, isn't this wonderful? Because what we're doing is avoiding what's happening in Europe and in the US. But we're not in Europe. We're not in the US. Victoria should be comparing itself with New South Wales, Queensland, Tasmania, Western Australia, etc. And by any similar test, this has been disastrously handled and the corruption in the failure of the government and its ministers and public servants, to be honest with the community they lead, only compounds the problem. And so often is the case. It's not the original mistakes that have become the major issue. It's the cover-up that continues to this day. Jeff, I don't make excuses for the Victorian Premier. I've slammed him over the contact tracing problems. I think I probably agree with a lot of your concerns and I can understand the anger from a lot of Victorians. But I'm not sure that the inflated rhetoric about communism and all of these sort of things helps people who are on the fence just wondering well, what should happen. Well, Peter, how would you describe it? We're locked down. We've had curfews. We can't travel around our state. Businesses can't open. And they're all decisions of one man. Now, all right, I accept communism a bit over the top. But it's a dictatorship. He doesn't listen to people in his own party. He doesn't listen to business community and health officials. He is making these decisions on his own. And I guess, Peter, all I'm saying is this can't go on without there being years of damage both to the mental welfare of a lot of our community, but also to our economy. Now, all right, maybe I went over the top with communism, but this is a dictatorship. I've never seen anything like it, and there's never been anything replicated in any other part of the world in dealing with this virus. So what would you call it? 
not communism or a dictatorship. What would you call it? Not, well, I would call it well, over well, the give top. Give me a name. Well, I would call it over the top. I mean, oh, he's elected by his own yeah, party. Yeah. There are party. They can remove him. It's not a dictatorship. 800 people who have died. There are hundreds of people, families, small businessmen who have lost their income and their financial security. And what did you describe it as? Over the top. Over the top. Well, you're very lucky because you've still got a job. Over the top. Well, you keep drawing your salary, my friend. You're very, very fortunate. But I tell you what, there's a lot of people here in Victoria who will never, ever recover from the way in which we've handled this virus. It should never have been about elimination. It should have always been about managing it, like you've done in New South Wales. Jeff, I think a lot of people understand your frustration. We appreciate you coming on the program. Thanks for your time. It was a great pleasure. I was just passing by. <laughs> Well, we, we have since had an update on test results in Melbourne's northern metropolitan region. Every one of the 1,135 processed since this morning has come back negative. There are a further 1,400 tests being processed from swabs taken today. Well, that's great news. That is great news. I mean, yeah, that, that you would hope will get us closer yeah. to Victoria opening yeah. up. It's interesting looking at the feedback that we've got on our Facebook page. Um, Grant saying, given the clarity the extra two days will give, re the northern cluster, mm. I'm content to wait. Renee says, we work too hard to risk losing ground now. And then we've got Felicity. She says, I still feel like a carrot was waved in front of us and we were hit by a stick. It's hard. It's really hard going, and I don't think anyone can understand except the Victorians how hard this has been. No one is taking that away from them. I just think that retrospect gives us an insight that you can't get in the moment, and to to call what Dan Andrews has done a dictatorship is a bit rough at this point. We're so close. I think we really have to stand together and make this happen. Tommy, I just hear two different things from people in Victoria: people who just want to make sure it's over no matter what, and people who are just incredibly frustrated that it's still going on along the lines of Jeff Kennett. I mean, it feels like it's really divided. Uh, it is really divided. And it's also really hard because you find yourself talking about it 24-7 and yeah. I'm now having conversations about politics with people who I've never talked about politics with yeah, before. Right. And that's me included. I don't want to go around and see my best mate in a park and end up chatting about politics that we've never agreed on. And this is... It's just so consuming of our lives mm. at the moment. And I have to admit... It is frustrating when we get told, you know, when we get down to under five cases as a rolling as a rolling average, we will get restrictions lifted. And then when that doesn't happen, but I also don't want to have a case where we get out of this and go back into a third lockdown. Mm. And so I don't even know what I think anymore. But I know as a Victorian, it sucks and we're hurting. I feel like it's it's months from now when we look back at this, even years, that we're really going to be able to pick through what's happened, mm. uh, and that's where the emotion will be out of it, at least. I don't know if my message Hopefully. from that PBO was, let's keep talking about it for years. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I was saying. Let's move on, then. Let's move on, I say. <laughs> hey, guys.